That data shows that for all practical purposes, Medicare excess charges are dead. Most people will go through their entire Medicare experience without ever coming across a doctor that can charge an excess charge. How do you know if the information about Medicare that is shown in a YouTube video is correct? I can assure you not all of it is. There's too much incorrect information about Medicare and Medicare supplement plans in some of the videos my competitors have produced on YouTube. I'm going to directly address some of that misinformation in this video and set the record straight. As many of you already know, our company's slogan is we help you make an informed decision about your Medicare. Well, you can't make an informed decision when you have incorrect information. In this video, I'm going to show you some blatant examples of misinformation. And at the end of the video, I'll show you how you can tell when some people are making stuff up instead of relying on facts. So this is going to be fun. If we haven't met yet, I'm Matthew Clausen, CEO of MedigapSeminars.org. We're one of the premier independent insurance brokerages in the country specializing in Medicare. Our services are free to you, the consumer, and as I said at the opening of this video, our goal is to help you make an informed decision regarding your Medicare. I believe the most important decision that a person can make with their Medicare is the decision to choose a Medicare supplement to complement the benefits of original Medicare. Choosing a Medicare supplement means you keep the ability to see any doctor, go to any medical facility in the United States and its territories as long as they accept Medicare. It also means that no insurance company can interfere with your health care. No insurance company can deny or delay coverage. There are none of the feared prior authorization requirements with original Medicare and a supplement. You lose those benefits if you choose to replace your Medicare with a Medicare Advantage plan. In fact, according to the Kaiser Family Foundation, Medicare Advantage plans denied 2 million prior authorization requests in 2021 alone. That's their most recent study as I'm filming this video in late 2023. So to me, quibbling over which Medicare supplement you choose is, is secondary. They're all good. In one of my videos that I will link above my left shoulder and of course down in the show notes below, I show that choosing the right supplement for you is more based on your personality and of course your budget than anything else. You should never make a decision to choose one supplement over another based on fear mongering and misinformation. What I've seen too much of is experts who claim that Medicare Supplement Plan G is your best choice because Medicare Supplement Plan N has no insurance against excess charges, and then position their presentation that makes you believe that excess charges are common. They're not. So let's take a look at the first example. With no max, and then that takes us to our third and final gap on original Medicare B, and that would be what is called an excess charge. Now, let me explain what an excess charge is. This is when a doctor um, can still bill Medicare, still sees Medicare patients, but they're not under a contract, which is called an assignment contract. This is a doctor that looks at that fee for service schedule and says, I cannot take that as payment in full. They are going to add to the bill. And uh, this is going to happen. So when doctors do this, what they do, they actually add 15% to the Medicare approved amount. And whenever they do that, you are responsible to pay for it. And again, there's no max. So every doctor you would see that adds 15%, you're responsible for that. Now, uh, statistically right now, they tell us about one out of 10 doctors charges excess. So it doesn't happen a lot, but it does happen. And most of you that are going to go on Medicare, you're going to be on Medicare for 20 to 30 years. So we have no idea what that's going to look like down the road, but we can make a decision to get that excess has charge covered by insurance if we choose to. His explanation of what an excess charge is is okay. It's not 100% accurate, but acceptable. Doctors that have a contract that allow them to charge an excess charge are called non-participating providers. Conversely, participating providers cannot charge an excess charge. They participate in Medicare and Medicare assignment. From a doctor's point of view, Medicare assignment is assigning Medicare the right to pay the doctor directly, 
where the doctor also agrees to accept Medicare's rates for each procedure or service. It's not called an assignment contract. It's a participating provider agreement. But that's splitting hairs. It's really not all that important. However, suggesting that 10% of the Medicare doctors are non-participating providers that can charge an excess charge is not even in the ballpark of accuracy. So take a look at this. This is CMS, the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, their annual announcement on participating providers. This is their notice to medical providers and is public information on their website. Just a quote from it. As you plan for 2023 and become familiar with the coming changes for the year ahead, we wish to emphasize the importance and advantages of being a Medicare participating provider. We are pleased that the favorable trend in participation continued into 2022 with a participation rate of 98%. 98% of the doctors that accept Medicare have a contract that forbids them to charge an excess charge. That means that only 2%. 2%, not 10% of doctors that see Medicare patients have a contract that allows them to charge an excess charge. Now this statistic is repeated in the medpac.gov report to Congress with even more information that you should know. So this is from page 121 of the MedPAC report to Congress chapter 4. There's a lot here. There are several different ways for clinicians to bill Medicare, which yield different payment amounts. In 2021, 98% of the clinicians billing the physician fee schedule were participating providers, meaning they agreed to accept Medicare's fee schedule amount as payment in full. Clinicians who wish to collect somewhat higher payments of up to 109.25% of Medicare's payment rates can balance bill patients for an additional cost sharing if they sign up as a non-participating provider and to choose not to take assignment on the claim. But very few clinicians choose to do this. Here's the good part. In 2021, 99% of the fee schedule claims were paid at Medicare's standard payment rate. Wow, let's break that down. 99.7% of all Medicare bills were submitted at assigned rates with no excess charge. 99.7%. That leaves only 0.3% of Medicare bills that include an excess charge. What does that come out to? About one out of every 300 Medicare bills. That is a far cry from the assertion that it's one out of 10. I also want to point out on this is that the details, the specialties of medical professionals who have opted out of Medicare entirely. Now this is opt out. It's a different category than those who have not opted out but charge an excess charge. However, there is a strong correlation between the categories of medical professionals who opt out and those who choose to charge an excess charge. The data I have is from the Kaiser Family Foundation on specialties of, of medical professionals who can charge an excess charge. And it's old. It dates back to 2016. But it is nearly identical to those who opt out, showing 43% were in the mental health profession, and only 11% were primary care physicians. Now this is important. 2% of the doctors can charge an excess charge. Of those, 11% are primary care physicians. That means out of 1,000 primary care doctors, you might find two that can charge an excess charge. Let that sink in for a minute. This is all public data, easily researchable, and it's a far cry from 10%. That data shows that for all practical purposes, Medicare excess charges are dead. Most people will go through their entire Medicare experience without ever coming across a doctor that can charge an excess charge. And even if they do, it is then negotiable. Now you're not expected to know all this and e even the ability to research this data takes some know-how. 
But at the end of this video, I will show you how you can tell when certain people are making statistics up as they go along. Here's a fair question. Why is it that so few doctors want a contract that allows them to charge an excess charge? Because Medicare penalizes them. The participating provider program was changed back in 2010, so it's almost 14 years ago, resulting in an immediate drop to just a few percent of doctors charging excess charges from over 30 percent prior to 2010. So what are the two major penalties that doctors have to overcome in order to charge an excess charge? First is that non-participating doctors are paid 5% less from Medicare than other doctors. So if a participating doctor who accepts Medicare assignment is paid $100 for a service, the non-participating doctor is only paid $95. Then they can charge up to 15% more on that $95. Now that's important because it means they only get nine and a quarter percent more than the doctor that accepts assignment. This is why in the medpac.gov report that I just showed, it says refers to clinicians who wish to collect somewhat higher payments of up to 109.25% of Medicare's payment rates. Now that's not much more, especially when you consider the second penalty. But make it clear, the doctors don't get 15% more than they would have gotten. They're only getting nine and a quarter percent more at most. So when you see a participating doctor who accepts Medicare assignment and Medicare rates, they don't bill your supplement plan. Medicare is called their one-stop biller. And that means that they bill Medicare, Medicare pays its portion, and then it instructs the company what to pay and when. So the doctor, though, from their point of view, the doctor doesn't have to do anything. Medicare does it all for them. Now that's not the case with the doctor that charges an excess charge. In addition to being paid less, Medicare will not act as their one-stop biller. They must bill Medicare. They're required to. But Medicare pays you, the patient. They also cannot bill the supplement insurance company because they don't have a contract with the supplement insurance company. So what do they do? They require you to pay up front. You're reimbursed by Medicare for their portion, and then you must manually submit the bill to the supplement company for reimbursement from them. This means that you can tell if a doctor can charge an excess charge immediately by the fact that they will require you to pay them up front for their service. Obviously, this is not a consumer-friendly way to run a business. Or, of course, you can uh, go online at Medicare.gov and look up the doctor. If they have a, a red question mark, like what we're showing here, they're a non-participating provider and may charge an excess charge. Again, that's negotiable. And note, by the way, this is a, a chiropractic provider. You have no idea how hard it was to find this example so that I could show it to you. Actually, is one of my team members, and I asked them, hey, if they ever come across it, let me know, and, and she did. So anyway, now let's look at another example of misinformation. But before I do, if you find this video informative and you want to see more like it, please press the like button below and subscribe. If you also click on the bell notification, you'll be alerted when I produce another video. And of course, let me know if I'm being harsh here by showing examples or if you believe this is the right way to go to call out those who don't take the time to research their subject before filming a presentation supposedly educating you. You could tell it's a pet peeve of mine. But anyway, thank you in advance. Now, let's look at this. They live in one of those eight states, but you may need care sometime outside of those states. And so we really can't predict whether we're ever going to encounter excess charges or not. I can tell you that at Mayo Clinic and at some of these specialty hospitals, they always add excess. And so you'd be liable for that. But that's really boils down to, you know, your comfort level, how much risk that you want to take. And then that's repeated here. 
medical equipment providers do not charge these, only doctors. And this is a doctor that will see you as a Medicare patient, but will not agree under a contract to take Medicare approved reimbursement amounts. That's called an assignment amount. And so a doctor that doesn't take assignment can legally add to the bill 15%, and when they do so, you're responsible to pay for it. Now, not all, all doctors do this. Uh, some do, especially some of your specialty places, Mayo Clinic, MD Anderson, Cleveland Clinic, those kind of places will add the 15%. But what I'm trying to- This is absolutely 100% false. The last major hospital to charge excess charges was Mayo Clinic in Florida, and I believe Arizona. And that was back in 2018 or 2019. They dropped excess charges four or five years ago. Now they send out a statement every year about the fact that they don't accept Medicare Advantage plans, just original Medicare. In fact, I do not personally know of any hospital that charges an excess charge. Now there may be, I'm, I'm not saying there isn't. And if you know of one, please let me know in the comments below. It actually might be very helpful if you happen to. Now, the hospital must let you know ahead of time, and it usually has a section on Medicare and excess charges that you would need to pay. When you look up the, if they accept Medicare and they say they participate in Medicare, it means they are a participating provider and do not charge excess charges. Still, here are a few rules about excess charges that will help. First, any medical provider that will charge an excess charge must state so publicly in advance. Mayo Clinic used to have a web page dedicated to that. When you looked up, does Mayo Clinic accept Medicare? They had an entire web page dedicated to the details of what you would be charged. An individual doctor might post a statement in their lobby or on their website. These next points are very important to remember. There are no excess charges allowed for emergency procedures. No surprise billing allowed. There are no inpatient excess charges, only select outpatient services. And there are no Part A excess charges. They don't exist. There's also an all or none rule with excess charges. If you have a hospital or any physician's group like Main Street Orthopedics, either every Medicare medical provider employed by that group charges an excess charge or no one can. You cannot have your odd man or odd woman out. And the same is true at a hospital. It's all or none. There's one exception to that rule, which is a teaching hospital that bills by department. And again, I don't know of any. So when would I personally check for potential excess charges? I was asked about this when having this conversation just a few weeks ago. If I were having an outpatient surgery in an outpatient surgical center, not in a hospital, I would check the surgical facility to see if they charge an excess charge and then check the group they use for anesthesiology. Now, because of the all or none rule, you don't need to, the name of the specific anesthesiologist. You just need the name of the group. And that's only because anesthesiologists are one of those specialties that you know, do have an, an unusual high rate of, of excess charges. Not a high rate. I mean, you know, you're, you're dealing with very small numbers here, but still, that's what I would do. Other than that, keep in mind that the average excess charge in the United States, according to Medicare, is about $50. Nothing to fear. Okay, one more example just for fun. 95% of all people that choose Medicare supplemental plans today are going either with a G plan or an N plan. Well, that's just plain made up. Every year, Jen Ari does a survey on Medicare supplement plan sales in the U.S. The most recent survey shows that 66% of the Medicare supplement plans purchased are a plan G. 9% are a plan N. The total then for G and N is 75% of supplement plans sold, not 95%. Now what the survey that General RE has shown, as I, I monitor this each year, is that since 2020, Plan F has declined from the most popular plan down to just 11% of plans purchased. Sales of Plan F are declining each year. 
Conversely, sales of Plan N are increasing each year as people find it to be a better value than their other choices, and it, they prefer the price stability of a Plan N to a Plan G. I suspect that it's going to advance past 15% in 2024. We'll see. At this point, I believe I have beaten up um, Mr. Music and his Medicare school enough for one video. But there is more, and I will expect to do more videos like this as time allows. So subscribe and click the bell notification if you want to see more. Now, I promise to tell you how you can tell when someone is making up statistics. But first, let me say that don't be led into a higher priced, higher commission product by fear. If someone uses statistics, they should reference the source and, if possible, link that source in the video description or article. Second, I remember being taught back in the early 1980s by an insurance salesman that you should always use statistics in your presentation because it makes you sound more informed. And I responded that and when he suggested that, uh, it's like, what if I don't know the statistics? I mean, this is pre-internet and I certainly didn't want to lie. Well, his answer is very telling. Just preference the statistic with people tell me or I have heard and then say whatever you need. If you tell yourself, he continued, you tell yourself out loud that X number of people choose this plan, then you heard yourself say it, and you're people, so you heard people say it. So you're not lying. It's an old school sales technique. The bottom line, look out for phrases like, people tell me, or I have heard people say, as they're usually followed by something that has no basis in truth. It's like a poker tell, and once you see it, you can't unsee it. It reveals itself often. So there it is. Now it's your turn. I make these videos for you to help you make an informed decision. Please leave me a comment below and let me know what part of this video that you found most informative or most entertaining. And if you have a question that I didn't answer, ask it below and I'll respond. Um, not necessarily as quickly as some would like, but I do go through them and, and try to respond to all of them because I am interested in what you have to say. And I hope you found this information helpful. So please like this video, press the thumbs up for me if you found the information useful. When you do, you help other people researching the same questions you had find this video. If you want more, subscribe to my channel so you can see all my Medicare videos. I'm Matthew Clausen with MediGapSeminars.org. Thank you for watching.